Hello, you've caught me doing things in video games we'd never be able to do for real, leaping off a 100-foot tower and nonchalantly strolling away, killing a massive dragon and absorbing its soul, healing bullet wounds by sprinkling TCP on my hands. Video games are brilliant at making the impossible possible, so much so that three years ago we made a video about all the things that are way easier to do in games than in real life. Go and check it out, it's a good one. And then the other day when I was playing Final Fantasy VII Remake, a game that lets you backflip off the top of a moving motorbike, smack it with a sword and then pirouette onto your own bike, I was just casually walking through the canteen at Shinra HQ when all of a sudden I noticed... Yeah, yeah, sorry about that everyone. We, um... We can't seem to get through here without knocking all the chairs over. I'm not quite sure why. We're all level 50 now. We've beaten Hell House on hard mode and everything. But if you ask me, there should be a gold trophy for ordering hedgehog pie and chips and then successfully manoeuvring back to your table without bundling into all the furniture like we're playing We Love Flipping Katamari. And so this is the first thing on our list of seven things it's way easier to do in real life than in video games. Not bumping into things. I mean, yes, occasionally in real life you'll knock into a table or, heaven forbid, stub your toe on a door frame. But, you know, by and large, we're able to go about our daily lives collision-free. Video games are a different matter entirely, however. I imagine because developers have probably spent months coding complicated physics into everyday objects, and they're damned if we're not seeing how good they look once they've been knocked over. Watch yourself! I mean, fair enough, if you've made bespoke animations for every time Nathan Drake rubs shoulders with the general public, then you're going to want to fill an area with people and make us squeeze through it, aren't you? But the canteen in Shinra HQ is my absolute favourite example. The chairs are exquisite, the sound they make as they clonk onto the marble floor is perfect, and so we are doomed to send them flying every time we walk through here. Seriously, gameplay challenge for everyone watching this video. I've seen extraordinary footage online of people destroying bosses on hard mode without taking any damage, but if anyone can get Cloud, Barrett and Tifa through this staff cafeteria without knocking over a single chair, then I will personally phone you up and offer you my congratulations. Oh, come on, Barrett, why don't you try taking your sunglasses off inside for a start? Entry 2. Now, like almost everyone, I was driving in video games long before I was driving in real life. Not in Grand Theft Auto, obviously, I didn't play that until I was 18, Mum, if you're watching. But I tell you what, driving in video games made me flipping terrified to get behind the wheel in real life. I still remember my very first driving lesson, sort of holding my breath, thinking, oh, flipping heck, as soon as my foot touches this accelerator, I'm going to be taking out every lamppost on this street. And then, I stalled a bit, as we all do when first driving a car, slowly pulled away and, miraculously, was never really in danger of, you know, veering into the wrong lane or ploughing through a red light or mounting the curb. It was easy. Naturally, video games are geared towards, you know, excitement and driving like you're in a James Dean movie, not pootling along at 30 miles per hour and obeying all the traffic laws. But still, have you ever actually tried driving legally in GTA 5? I have, just for a bit of fun. And wow, I can safely say driving in real life is way easier than driving in video games, as evidenced here in GTA, and especially here on our bus simulator livestream from a few months back. Oh no! <laughs> right, no traffic lights. Ah, the top wheel's off the road! Oh. And basically, just any time you have to move a vehicle from A to B in a video game. Entry 3 is specific to horror games. It's way easier in real life to not find yourself locked in terrifying asylums or abandoned houses or creepy wooden shacks in the middle of nowhere. Like, super easy. Here, look. So, I found this old mansion in a forest that nobody's lived in for a hundred years after someone was apparently murdered there. We can rent it for just £50 for the entire week. Are you in? No. 
See, so simple. Don't go on holiday to the weird cabin, especially if you and all your friends are teenagers. I am super excited to welcome all my pals back to the annual Blackwood Winter Getaway. <laughs> Don't reply to the whistleblowing email tipping you off about weird experiments happening at that old mental asylum. Just pretend it got lost in your spam folder. Little faith. <laughs> Don't go looking for your estranged wife you haven't seen for three years when she sends you a weird video message filmed in what looks like a cellar. A simple text message will suffice in this instance. And send. Done. You're in no danger. You're safe. In your house. With your feet up. Enjoying the excellent survival horror games that are the result of idiot people not making those sensible decisions. Entry number four. Picking things up. Check out this real-life footage of me picking up a glass of water, a tennis ball, a single item from inside a bowl. Back in video game land, we've got Cloud's drive back flipping Buster Sword wielding badass picking up a ball of materia. No, 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 there, got it. I mean, that wasn't so hard, but this is the shallow end of the look how difficult it is to pick things up in video games' pool of fun. Yes, Cloud can single handedly dismember an evil 15 foot lawnmower easier than he can bend over and grab a glowing orb of ice magic, but this is nothing like the trouble Lara Croft used to have back in the PS1 days. Remember trying to pick up med packs in this, like reversing a truck without a rear view mirror. Back. No, left. No, forward a bit. Too much. Back. Back. There. Good lord. I mean, it's this, juxtaposed against Lara's superheroic athleticism, that makes her relative inability to simply pick things up off the floor hilarious, especially because it allows us to genuinely claim we are better than Lara at something. So yeah, Lara, you might be smarter than us, you might be fitter than us, better at fighting than us, better at shooting and climbing and exploring and backflipping and deciphering ancient texts, but if you were a top trumps card, and I was a top trump's card and the person who had me in their hand said picking things up 78 then that person would win the round also have you ever tried picking up gold from inside a bowl in skyrim without accidentally picking up the bowl itself i swear they put these things in there just to laugh at us Okay, entry five now. Not falling off edges. I mean, in real life, it's actually really hard to do this. I've been on clifftop walks before and occasionally clambered onto a high bit and forced my wife to take a photo of me for my Instagram. See, worth it. But what this photo doesn't show is how uncontrollably wobbly my legs went, and I wasn't even near the edge, really. It was like some invisible instinct took over my body and was like, no, 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 no. We've assumed control of your legs and will return them only once you've walked a safe distance from this drop. Thank you very much. It was like I'd reached a real world invisible wall. The universe telling me no, not this way. But in video games I fall off edges all the time. Sometimes I don't even know there's an edge there. Sometimes it's because I'm prattling about and staring at waterfall graphics, I admit. Other times I'll be a bit overzealous with the attack button and the game will be like, ah, 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 concentrate. Here's the punishment for those who don't concentrate. Concentrate. I guess what I'm saying is, maybe there should be a mechanic in games where your hero gets jelly legs whenever they're near a big drop. You know, sort of like what happens to them when they do the big sorry for themselves, ooh, I'm injured walk near the end of the game, or when the big bad is hanging around. But then I guess we wouldn't be able to leap over chasms and do all that other cool stuff video games let you do, so let's shut up, shall we? I guess we'll just have to accept that not falling down massive ravines is always going to be much easier in real life than it is in video games. Number six, drawing. Now, I'm not saying drawing is easy in real life, far from it. Just look what happened when I asked Nathan to draw Geralt. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, Nathan, you did really try your best and that's all we can ask for. But heaven forbid I ask him to draw anything in a video game. I remember Okami most vividly, a game that felt like it was taking pity on my lack of artistic skill for the entirety of its 60 hour runtime. Draw a circle around this tree to make it bloom again, the game would say, and then... 
OK, that'll do. Have a cutscene. As if it was a parent who'd already bought us the well-done present for finally learning to swim, but then felt too cruel to withhold it once we'd failed. Shouldn't have backed my ability to draw a circle in a video game, Akami. That'll teach you. I mean, yes, I wasn't using a move controller when I played Akami, and that would have made things much more circular, I'm sure, but the fact remains drawing is much easier to do in real life than in video games. The final entry on this list of things that are way easier to do in real life than in video games is simply staying alive. This is so much easier to do in real life. I mean, as I'm writing this video, it's half past six in the evening. That means, since I woke up at seven o'clock this morning, I've gone 11 and a half hours without dying just today. Try playing a video game for 11 hours straight without dying and see what happens. In fact, when you think about it, I'm currently in my fourth consecutive decade of no real life game overs. Everyone watching this video, well done. You're successfully still alive, aren't you? What streak are you on? Tell us in the comments. Whereas in video games, you die all the time. In the street, in the hills, on the beach, in an abandoned nuclear clear warhead storage facility patrolled by armed guards. Admittedly, that's a dangerous place to be. But seriously, let's just look at some specific examples. Here's me touching some water in real life. Still alive. And here's me touching some water in Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Similarly, I've fed goats before in real life, and they're really nice. Here's me touching a goat in Crash Bandicoot. Also, when I'm late to work in real life, what happens? I get told off. What happens when you run out of time in a video game? Goodbye. Dead. In summation, it's much easier to stay alive in real life than it is in video games, and the fact we're all watching this video when we've all died, I don't know, 10,000 times across all video games combined, I'd love to know the real stats, is proof of that. So there we are, seven things that are actually way easier in real life than they are in games. Can you think of any other examples? Let us know in the comments, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and click that notification bell so you're always up to date with everything on the channel. Thanks for watching, and see you next week for another Friday feature. For the players.